So in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and start tearing down this motor in the sense of just tearing off the accessories such as these uh, power steering pump, things of that nature. So things that I won't need that I'll be harvesting over from the old motor. So it's missing quite a few things already. So I'm definitely going to have to reuse the oil filter housing, uh, transfer that over and things like that. The main reason why I'm doing to take it apart right now so that I can go ahead and clean this up because I hate to put this inside the motor when it's dirty like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start cleaning this up. All right, so I have all the gaskets, uh, valve cover, intake, oil, oil filter, oil housing, new filter, coolant, oil, and oil pan. So I just went ahead and cleaned up uh, the valve cover and cleaned up the top of the motor around the edges and everything. So now it's just to go ahead and reassemble everything and then start doing the oil pan. And after I do the oil pan, start taking everything from over here, injectors and all, and swap them over. So I have the oil pan off now and yeah, clean up the block. So I just need to clean up the oil pan. I need to go order some new screws because three of them once was taking it off, like barely touched them and they came off. Like they were already loose. So it was this one, this one, and right here in the back. So I need to go ahead and replace those. Luckily this one snapped off at the top. It still has piece protruding out the block. So I can just go ahead and use like something like this and just turn them out. These, there's not much pressure on them and you might be able to like use a um, flathead and try to like turn it. But I think I might just go ahead and use an easy out since I have one and take them out. Okay, now, so I extracted all the bolts now. And one of them, there's three of them, and one of them was, still had a head attached. So I could just use, go ahead and use a pliers and just twist it out. The rest, I had to go ahead and get a bolt screw extractor. So what I did was, got my screw extractor kit. Uh, this is from pretty much Harbor's Freight Special. Uh, one of these. So, number one uh, kit so these first two right here so what you do is you get like a punch like so and you just punch a hole in the center of the screw and then once you do that go ahead and put the screw part onto your drill or whatever and do backwards counterclockwise a little bit and just to get a little uh, hole in, indentation in there a little bit deeper and then use the extractor bolt same way put it in hit it in reverse, and the thing just spins right out. There's not a lot of pressure on it, so uh, it's not that thick. The main thing is just to make sure to cover it so that you don't get any kind of shavings or anything there like that. So I just tape the whole thing off, and I have this bag over it. So I keep the bag over it until I'm ready to put the gasket on there. So the old motor is torn apart. I just took off the new motor off the stand. So I had to take off the, the flex plate to go ahead and put the new um, flywheel onto there for the DCT. So that was the last thing I had to do, so I had to take it off the stand to do that. So yeah, we're just pretty much ready to go on the car now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, picked up this leveler, I'm gonna try to use it and see if it pretty much helps out in the process, it should, but I usually just put it in just like so and just use the jack underneath near the transmission to line everything up. But I'm gonna try it this way and see how it works. All right, so right now I'm going ahead and bleeding out the coolant before we do our first start. So all the fluids are in, the car's on the ground. Uh, I didn't put the engine cover on or the underbelly yet. So I'm making sure there's no leaks or anything like that, but still came up in park. I'm able to shift out and all that stuff. So everything looks good so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scan it and clear out anything right now, set the date and time, things of that nature. start the car started move forward and went into reverse so everything is good transmission wise and everything 
The only thing is they complained about a misfire on a cylinder six and the veno solenoid for the exhaust side. So that would be the bottom one right here. So the way this one's not that good. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it and see what happens. Oh yeah, and the fuel has been in this car for like a couple of months. I'd say like six plus months or so to sit in. So more than likely I'm gonna have to siphon out the old fuel, old fuel and go ahead and uh, replace it with some new one. So I went ahead and got in the car and cleared out all the colds. So pretty much fresh start and yeah, take third, second or third time. So let's see how this thing starts now. Let's try this again. Code's cleared and sounds promising. I feel it vibrating a little bit, so it's about to start soon. Would you step outside for a second? <laughs> Dear Lord, that's the loudest profanity I've ever heard. So it turned out to be a bad injector. So the injector is leaking. So some of the six was leaking. So that's why I was misfiring. So I went ahead and got a brand new injector. So I'm gonna take a picture of the numbers on here so I can register it and just install it now. So finish coding right now, 571218. And yes, turn this off. There we go, we're good to go. And, and. All right, so that's all coded now, so we should be good to start now. So hopefully everything should be running smoothly, no rough eyelid, no misfires or anything like that. So let's see how this goes. Clear that old code out from the misfire for cylinder six and everything. Sounds sounds good. So we're gonna go ahead and dump out all the old fuel in this car now because it's bad. So idle's good, but you can't really drive on it because it's gonna go ahead and like stall out. 
and it's not good for the engine so i'm just gonna go ahead and um loosen this up pull this off put a whatchamacallit a hose onto the here and go into my diagnostic tool and turn on the fuel pump and just cycle it through and get as much fuel out as possible so i put on some rats because i know the car was on recently so try to catch as much fuel and so that it doesn't spray up while i crack open the bolt right here with a 17 millimeter so i'm just going ahead and crack it open and yeah let the pressure off bleed off a little bit then can finally put on the hose so this is how it's going to look so as you can see this piece is off and then just have this holes over here and then have the other end going into like a container so yeah this is the easiest way i could think of doing it without having to lift up the seeds taking the hatches off in the um rear so yeah i'm gonna try this out and see how it goes all right so you get a canister like this and then you go ahead and take a 17 millimeter and remove the fuel line right here off and just push the nut back and then get one of these hoses. So I got this hose off a of Harbor Freight transfer pump that I have sitting around. So any kind of hose really, just try, try it out and test it out and see if it'll come off. And I just put this uh, this, uh zip tie over it, but it's, I don't think it's needed, but I just put it on there just so it doesn't slip off or whatever. But yeah, have it running down and I'm just using this bucket right here for illustrative purposes right now. So you can see when I turn it on, but yeah, go ahead and make sure to put it in a bucket like that. So I'm gonna transfer the rest over once I just do this quick test real quick. So we're gonna go to BMW, automatic selection, hit okay. Control unit, drive, DME, and activate test. Should be all the way down at the bottom. Alright, there you go, fuel pump. Hit enter and F3 to activate. So it only runs for like 20 seconds. So this printer is gonna go through and cycle, cycle through it. And this is how it's gonna look. So I got the low fuel light on right now. So I got like two more cycles before I could go ahead and uh, put the new fresh fuel inside the car. So finished now, so just took this off and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect all the stuff and put it all back together, fill it up with a new fuel and yeah, should be good to go. So going ahead and filling up the car right now with a fresh fuel with the other container. So it's about four gallons right now that I have in the container. So I'm just gonna fill that up and it should mix in with that last little bit of residue, bring out octane and all that other good stuff. So it should be running a whole lot smoother right now. So just waiting on this. It's taking a while, but it's going. All right, so got my scan tool hooked up and I'm gonna start it now and see how it uh, reacts now. So with a fresh gas, it should uh, idle and rev freely and maybe it could drive it. So let's see. so good no colds just uh cold start loudness but see how it looks outside <laughs> 